um, my colleagues, uh, no, no, and and I see that there are probably a lot of individuals that uh, want to give public testimony. So at this point, I'm going to um, ask the public to line up down the middle. Um, the sergeant will actually, and each of you, there are a lot of individuals um, that want to speak, and we want to make sure that everyone gets an opportunity to voice their concern. Uh, we had some excellent individuals up here that gave very concrete information. So if your testimony is okay. favorable to, to them, um, please uh, say, I agree with X, Y, and Z. Um, you each have a minute. And um, so stay very focused, and then I will let you know once your minute is up. Proceed, please. Okay. My uh, testimony is favorable to Ms. Sweeney. Uh, Ms. State Sweeney. your name, please. Oh, I'm sorry. Melvina Martin. And my name is Melvina Martin. My testimony is favorable to uh, Barbara Kaufman, Joe Sweeney, uh, Ms. Rama, and all those on the left side. And I personally know of... Um, the Judicial Council's lack of response because I have repeatedly provided documents regarding John uh, Oglesby who got his fourth reprimand for covering up for John, uh, Corey Woodward who was having sex with his court clerk whom he provided testimony that he was such a great man and that he didn't get disrobed. Instead he was transferred to a different city in Mojave and he kept violating my uh, due process and my fee waivers. Uh, and then that John Oglesby came and took his place, uh, disqualified himself. July 31st, 2013, came back on November 12th and said, oh, I'm going to disqualify myself. I'm going to disqualify I'm myself. Gonna wrap it up. Wrap it and up. instead, he became a state actor and making nothing but void orders. I gave each documents, backdated documents, court transcripts, uh, uh, void orders and all this, and they have all those and said, we see no cause and further Thank you. information. A minute goes by really fast. Yes. So. And so does the line in the Judicial yeah. Council. <laughs> Good afternoon. My name is Sherry Safafu, and I'm victim of Marine Family Court and the San Francisco Family Court. I want to say black and white, this lady is lying. I, I, I reported six times to them. They know me very well. I cry. I know. I, I raise hell. You know, oh, you know, we didn't find any merit. The same judge. I just talk on the, on the hallway. Six other people like me. The same day, I, you know, this uh, child, child protection service was called. They, they catch my ex, you know, beating my child in the street. Somebody report this the, to see child protective services. And he's my ex lawyer, which is friend of Beverly Wood, Judge Wood in Marine Family Court, Rene Marcel, Adam Gurley, all those lawyers. So they, they came to court and they tell Beverly Wood, the friend, oh, she made it up. Nobody called. I ran to them. I showed them. Nobody even investigated. Who called CPS to show, to say they see my son? I believe personally, my I become social advocate. I become social justice advocate because of those liars. I believe personally, and I prove it. Please, one more Thank time. Bar you. Association Thank and you. CJD are an organized criminal. Thank you. If you have um, anything in writing you'd like to leave it with us, feel free to do that as well. Yeah. Thank you. Please proceed. Hello, counsel. I'd like, well, the CJP has their back to me once again, but the CJP has to realize that they were created to protect the public from corrupt judges. If they don't do that, you are going to have public members marching into courthouses, ripping these corrupt judges off the benches and kicking them out themselves. So while the CJP sits there with their back to me again on this matter, they don't realize this. We are bigger than they are. We need to do something. That's why we are here today, why we took work off. So we need them to do their constitutional mandate, and I believe you as the committee needs to fully investigate these individuals with a microscope and remove them. You remove the problems at the CJP 
and then you will get different results. Thank you. Hi, my name is Bob Saunders, Sacramento, California. Uh, Harry Truman had a sign on his desk that said the buck stops here. I'm trying to figure out where the buck stops with CJP. Um, also, um, our, our medical establishment has a credo that says, first do no harm. I'm trying to figure out what the, um, why the uh, legal establishment doesn't have that as well. I'm a member of the National Lawyers Guild. I belong to a lot of different organizations. In my own case, there's been illegal abduction without, uh, without a court order. Um, Miners Council assaulted and battered my children and myself in a case, took my kids away the next day. She's gotten promoted to head that local uh, uh, criminal lawyers group in Sacramento. And then uh, the courts in Sacramento, the anti-family courts, are uh, it's successful of fraud and corruption. It's a criminal corporate enterprise that makes a mafia look like a, a bunch of choir boys. We need to, what we need to do actually is defund the CJP. They're committing fraud. They're committing grand larceny and corruption. They need to be investigated. The people that sit at the head of them should be arrested, uh, um, brought to trial. Well, we don't want to kill them yet. You want to bring them to trial for us. And then, and then um, investigate. And what we need to do is clean up thank, the system. Thank you. Thank and you. let's, um, I hear your frustration. And we're here. And we want to hear from every single one. But let's not personalize this and use words that could be um, seen in a very harmful way. I know this is a tough issue. And, but we, at the same time, we're in a, uh, a government facility. So please um, choose your words wisely. Thank you. Hi. I'm Joanne McReynolds. If 22 months ago they had taken Ruma's case seriously, I would not have to be here. We need to have greater accountability for the judges that reside over our courts, specifically Judge Beverly Wood of Marin County, a family court judge. She has been doing this for over eight years. She needs to be investigated and removed from the bench for the following reasons. In my case alone, Judge Wood does not follow the law. She refused to consider or even look at evidence that was put in front of her regarding my case. Judge Wood refused to grant me an evidentiary here trial, even though there was a significant change of circumstances. Judge Wood refused to grant my request for even reunification therapy for my kids. By doing these things, Judge Beverly Wood facilitates my ex-husband's ongoing parental alienation with two of my sons that I raised since birth. And due to Judge Wood's determinations, my children do not talk to me or even see me. It's been since before Christmas that I have seen my kids. This is a travesty and a shame to the state of California. And I, and I say this as a mother. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Angelique Barboa. I am from Merced County. Um, when Ruma mentioned the, a brief word, but it's happening all over, it is happening. I haven't seen my son in this year, it'll be about four years, and basically what the judge had done is deny even my son rights. Um, when my little boy at six years old said, hey, um, I want to speak to the judge, okay? And then the second thing is, um, come, I'm a little bit nervous here or there. I'm just going to skip all the, the drama there. Basically what I'm saying is that when I asked the judge, certain information about the documentations. Um, he denied everything. He was like, what? He didn't even look at the case. He just handed over my son to my ex. I made a couple complaints to where I was supposed to be the administrative board, and nothing heard. When um, the person here in the blue, I'm sorry, I don't remember her name, but when she calls things meritless, our complaints were not meritless. We're here. We're standing here for a reason, because our children, our families matter and we're bringing this to your attention. And so, you know, I haven't heard anything regarding my complaints, and that was almost four years ago, and that's twice. So I don't know where she's getting her information. Maybe she's cuffing it, but here's the thing when I'm looking at it, is that if you're saying in 1994 you got judges doing this bidding behind closed doors, then you have to really look at it. Why is the judges handling their own handling? 
Why is somebody else? Why can't you have an organization as um, Kathleen said that? Thank you. Okay. Wrap it up. Thank you, ma'am. But I understand you understand what I'm saying. Yes. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. I'll wait for that. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) At least a good song, huh? Okay. Hello, my name is. This is not perfect. My name is Sean Fierstein, and um, I'm uh, the face of a deadbeat parent. Uh, I've gone through this for 15 years now in the courts, dealt with judges. Uh, one of the problems here with the complaining and sitting and protesting judges and all that, and these people not being heard. One part of it is, is not only is it not being heard, but then there's retaliation. I don't even bother to file a complaint because I have to worry about retaliation, and it's happened to me, okay? These people are going unchecked, these judges. Um, Not only do we need an oversight committee, but we need to have cameras and recording in there because the only people that are getting justice are the people with money. I'm now $30,000 in debt, and that's why I'm a deadbeat parent. You guys need to either pay attention to what's happening and do something about it. We're suffering. We are suffering here. We're losing our children, and no one's doing anything about it. I never asked. I I invite any. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Actually, we're the ones that make the decisions. Oh, it's okay. I I mean, I'm I'm, I'm talking to you. I feel like I'm not being listened to here. Yeah, my staff, myself, and the assembly members here um, are the ones that will be making any decision. Right, decision, but I'd like to be listened to. Yeah, they're they're trying to figure out how do we move forward on this item so that I don't have to be pulled away to make that those decisions right now because I want to pay, listen to you. So please proceed. I apologize, then. I, I'm sorry. But this is an emotional thing. I know, thing. I know, but that's why I'm, I took some time to explain to you. So please um, proceed. In my case alone, there has been one judge that helped my um, son's mother uh, fertilate, um create a sexual abuse allegation, that person is now an acting judge in Sacramento County. How are we supposed to get justice when there's that type of stuff going on and no oversight? You might want to wrap it up now. I I, I will. Um, We have yet another judge in Sacramento County that's throwing out uh, um, contempt to courts like it's Skittles. Nobody's paying attention to what's happening in these courts. You really need to be, because, and and to her point, though, I'm sorry, I will wrap this up real quick, but to her point is, it's it's hearsay, us against judges. Thank you. There's absolutely no one paying attention or any facts to back up anything. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Roberta Fitzpatrick from San Jose. I submitted a complaint to the Council on Judicial Performance, and it took about a year to get a response that there was nothing to complain about. A judge knowingly sent my great niece to live with her ex-convict drug addicted father who had invited a known pedophile to be his friend and employee. She was dead nine months later. That judge apparently had very good judgment and did nothing wrong. We need somebody who's really going to care about our kids and make sure that judges are qualified to deal with children and their needs. Right now, the Council on Judicial Performance is useless. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair and committee members, thank you for having us today. I'm Catherine Campbell Rafa from Santa Clara County. Um, I've been in the court system since 2007, and my family has probably spent um, $2 million on our case. Because when you have a person who, a child who tells you they're being sexually abused, you will spend every dime you have to protect your child. And the person who has been accused by their children of this will spend every dime to keep out of jail. Um, We are having a problem now where our courts 
don't want to look at sexual abuse. And by doing that, they're willing to not listen to the children when they tell the courts that maybe it's happened after they've been threatened, after they have told CPS directly about the abuse, sleeping with knives, worried for their lives, as they were taken away from me and forced to live over three years with their sexual abuser. What happens is, is the courts are becoming so scared of this that they are willing to say that there's evidence that this was proven to be untrue when it's not. What happens then is you have a vexatious litigant and you're undermined. The court, it's right now the judges are actually allowing abuse to happen. And when we had a new judge come onto our case, when he had to tell me I was vexatious because in the past the courts had many missteps and allowed these children to live with their sexual abuser. It's so sad to see that someone who's taken an oath will, is being forced to say someone's vexatious. So at this point, we need oversight because this is going to continue until there's accountability. And at this time, there's no accountability for these judges. They will continue to put down the protective parent and we are creating a generation of children who are not being protected, and that's what we need. We need protection for our citizens. Catherine, thank you. thank you for your testimony. Thank you. Nice to see you again. Good to see you. Good afternoon, Madam Chair and committee members. I have a very brief uh, pre-written statement I'd like to, to get through, if you'll allow me. My name is Thomas Portoy, and I'm speaking here today as a resident of Contra Costa County. I'm here because I'm deeply concerned about the matter of judicial accountability in California. In November of 2004, I submitted a written complaint to California Commission on Judicial Performance. The report outlined a detailed account of a Contra Costa County judge's blatant improprieties and violations of the Judicial Code of Ethics. Over the past 12 years, I've written the CJP on numerous occasions requesting a response to my complaint. All that I received from the CJP was a letter thanking me for my, quote, well-written and well-presented complaint. Their response went on to say, without further explanation, that my complaint was unfounded and therefore closed by the commission. I am deeply concerned that the judge I complained about has strong political ties to both the Commission on Judicial Performance as well as the Judicial Council. These are facts that I can prove but these facts have fallen on deaf and partisan ears at the Commission on Judicial Performance. In addition to my own overwhelming concern, the national organization known as Judicial Watch has also written Director Henley on my, uh, on my behalf to express their concerns in this matter. Both Judicial Watch and myself are deeply distressed by the Commission's lack of transparency, accountability, and failure to offer acceptable responses to concerned California citizens. Canon 2 of the California Code of Judicial Ethics states that a judge must avoid all impropriety and even the appearance of impropriety. A judge must expect to be the subject of constant public scrutiny. It should also be said that the CJP must also avoid the, that same appearance of impropriety. And they as well should be the subject of con constant scrutiny. When the Commission fails to respond to meritorious complaints under the cloak of judicial privilege, there exists far more than just an appearance of impropriety. My colleagues have joined me here today to shed light on the effectiveness of, California, of California's Commission as compared to those of other state oversight agencies, and California lags far behind. The CJP would like this committee to provide more funding for their already ineffective operations. However, it would be more beneficial to the citizens of California to provide further oversight and scrutiny to an agency who feels that they do not have to be accountable to the citizens that they're supposed to serve. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Tanya Nemsik, and I think I deserve Victoria Henley to look me in my eyes as I talk to you because I just filed a federal lawsuit with your name on it because you don't do your job. And apparently the only uh, way that I'm supposed to get... Can you please address your um, co comments to us? Yeah. If you'd like to meet with her well, in they, a different setting, you can do so, but I, we're the ones here that are going to make a decision on this item. 
So if we can hear your comments, please. Well, apparently I feel like the only way that I can actually get a fair, decent trial in front of fair judges that are going to actually look at my cases to go to the federal district court or the higher supreme courts because the state courts aren't doing their jobs. I have been to the appeal court. I have been to the California state supreme court. I have filed complaints with the commission of judicial performance, which, okay, they moved fence to mock her over to civil court because there I can't file a civil suit because she'd be the judge overseeing it. So I have to go out of the state in hopes hopes that maybe I can one day get justice and one day get my children protected because you guys keep failing to do your jobs. And I think that there's plenty of people here that have laid out all the evidence to say that that's true. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, good afternoon, Chair. My name is Fatima Katumbasi, a resident of Sacramento County. It appears that those who are appointed to the bench are really removed and those voted uh, voted in by the people are censored or admonished. Personally, I filed two complaints against Sacramento County Superior Court Judicial Officer Sirs for misconduct. On repeated recommendation from state and county agencies, I was advised to continue uh, filing my complaints, although the CJB kept rejecting them. I, I find that ludicrous. It is like someone walking in circles expecting a straight line, totally insane. The first complaint was against a sitting judge in the Sacramento Municipal Court who was using her title to advance personal interests, failed to disclose an abuse of authority, which she hired an outside collection agency to collect a debt on behalf of my ex-husband, indicating the debt was for services rendered at my request. When she was an attorney, she was never represented, um, she never represented me in any court action. Second complaint was failure to ensure rights and bias. Without stipulation of the parties, then a Title IV D Child Support Commissioner, Matthew J. Gary, exceeded jurisdiction by issuing child custody orders. Repeatedly, I was denied many motions by the Sacramento Superior Court. I felt it was, it was retaliation and discriminatory practices. The Sacramento County Department of Child Support Services filed numerous motions to modify the orders based on the fact that my income was in the form of federally funded assistance. This sought um, um, irreparable harm to me and my family. What recourse did I receive from the California Judicial Performance? A boilerplate template that that the matter would not be investigated. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Vicki Odabashian. My husband, Glenn, and I um, began have to experience the family court system in Sacramento County uh, as grandparents seeking custody of a grandchild. Um, and our experience was with a judge who on two occasions just made very rash decisions um, and handed my granddaughter over to an alcoholic uh, into the custody of his hands. It took us five months and um, about $9,000 in legal fees to actually prove that the judge made a mistake. The judge never actually acknowledged making the mistake, although we do now have custody of our granddaughter. So I guess in this room I'm considered considered one of the lucky ones. But what we found is that the judge did not really take into consideration the history of the child and the custody prior to making his rulings. And my only, uh, the only thing that I can guess is that because he doesn't suffer the consequence, we did. Uh, and, and we had to pursue things um, for quite some time. And it was financially, it was very expensive, but emotionally. It took its cost, it's took its toll, taken its toll on my granddaughter and on the family as well. And so if there's no consequence, then why would you review any information about the past history of a person before handing the child over to that parent? If you had a consequence in the end, maybe you would second guess it. But it seems that that is not the case. The consequence from their decision is not theirs. It, the consequence is ours. And um, thankfully, we were able to rectify things. But it should change because we had the resources to do it, and not everyone does. Thank you. Thank you. Testimony. Hi, my name is Logan Begno, and I'm speaking on behalf of the California Protective Parents Association. The CPPA is gravely concerned about the CJP's low discipline rates and inefficiencies with its current funding, and we believe that the CJP's current money should be spent more efficiently before the legislature gives them money to hire more staff. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, and good afternoon. My name is Barbara Ness. I live in Placer County, which is corrupt as Los Angeles County, or Orange County, I should say. I have a very difficult time believing that only 16% of your complaints come from uh, fa family law. I also don't believe there was only 1,300 complaints. I know 1,300 people that have written. Um, 
I, my granddaughter was taken uh, from us eight years ago. It was overturned. However, we still don't have my granddaughter back after it was overturned and found illegal what CPS did. Um, th these judges and commissioners like Trilla Barkey in Tahoe City who refuses to allow you to be heard by a judge even though that's the law. Commissioner Amara lie, cheat, steal, whatever he did. I understand he's no longer sitting on the bench in Placer County. Huh, I wonder how that happened. Also, um, Judge Ross, he'll do whatever anybody tells him to do, just rolls over, except for the people that have the best interest of the child at heart, especially the people that have the best interest of the child. That is not what we have. We are not demonstrating that we care about the children. The children are the most important thing. They're the only thing in my book. So. That's about all I have to say this time. But thank you for being here and thank you for hearing us. And I think more complaints. Maybe we all should write a letter. I don't know. <laughs> thank you. Hi, my name is Stacy. I'm from Placer County. And I just want to support everything that Kathleen and Barbara and uh, you all are doing. Uh, I'll be brief. The CJP does not respond to any complaints, especially when there's blatant evidence that you've sent in that a, a judge has lied uh, except, you know, I, my judge in Plas or commissioner in Placer County was investigated for accepting bribes from the FBI. We were all told to be quiet about it, but the CJP did nothing and said there's no basis in it, even though it was a court employee that was first uh, solicited about this particular commissioner. Um, that's all I want to say. I know there's a lot of people ready to speak, but I'll let I go on forever. Thank the CJP is, is horrible. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Charles Wagner. Thank you for allowing me to speak today and for your being here. I was formerly from Shasta County where we had a judge temporarily assigned. I want to make a point on that. Temporarily assigned to the bench for 18 years. He was not subject to oversight by the Commission on ju Judicial Performance. I want to know why not after 18 years. This judge hurt so many people, we had nowhere to go. I'm 81 years old on Social Security, and I had to use my limited funds to do a quo warranto to remove him from the bench, which was successful. I thank you very much for the time. I thank you very much for your expertise. Please help us. I do believe in this. I am, I thank can't you. tell you enough. Thank you, Charles. Thank you. Hi, my name is Julia Medina. Um, my case is actually in Placer County. I am a resident of Sacramento County. Um, I didn't prepare anything, but I just kind of jotted down a couple notes. Um, my main concern is that judges have become the supposed good people in our society that we look to who are doing nothing, just sort of watching uh, atrocities happen to parents and not stepping in and being afraid of repercussions against them uh, for giving orders of fairness or even being able to do that without, you know, worrying about their own job. There's bias and domestic profiling going on. Lazy ex-husband, crazy ex-girlfriend, things like that. We all know this. We all know what this is about. Let's not kid ourselves. The court and law enforcement are being used by abusers to perpetuate abuse even after abusive relationships come to an end. This needs to end now. We are parents who relive the death of our children every day who are in reality only 10 minutes away. We all know why this is happening, but there are parents like me studying, working together, and if you won't work with us, we'll find a way through our common beliefs to force change that needs to happen with votes, tort lawsuits, and by list enlisting our friends, family, and through social media. If you won't work with us to bring logic to the family court, we will do so without you. 
Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is uh, Jonathan Zachariou. I'm a pastor in Davis, California. And I'm standing here. First, I want to thank the committee for taking this time. You've shown a lot of patience, and this has been very different than most meetings I've been in in this room. So I really appreciate it, especially you, Chair Wan. Um, I want to bring a point up to the, to the panel that you might consider. The oversight uh, for judicial uh, practices has oversight over criminal and family and civic law and maybe a few more areas. Um, and I think that needs to be revisited. A lot of I have been in courtrooms where criminal cases, because of our church members, that criminal cases are being uh, tried. Um, uh, a lot of that's not me. I cannot believe this is happening. That's my parking. Anyway, forgive me. Um, if you have oversight over the criminal, and you have oversight over the family law, the judges that deal with both, family law is suffering a lot. But I'm wondering if the cover-up is because there are places in the criminal side that also have overlap in politics, where if you start looking, you're not going to find just a disease on the family law side, but a lot of it in the criminal side. And I'm only mentioning this. You have a former colleague who was found guilty of gun running, got five years sentence for gun running and trading with terrorists, basically. A five-year sentence that is passed on from a court, I don't know if people want to start looking into how did that happen? What was going on in a, in a, in a court of law for a criminal case for a sitting senator who was acting in this way? I mean, no disrespect to any of you. I know you're assembly members that have to do with the assembly, uh, with the Senate, but oversight, we, and especially on the family law side, there's so many people that are getting destroyed because there's no oversight. And I'm wondering if there's something hiding somewhere else that nobody wants to touch. Please, as a committee, please pay attention to this. I, I plead to you as a pastor. Thank people you. are suffering. Thank you. Hello. My name is Susan Ferris. And I, uh, my case was in Sacramento court. The judge was Matthew J. Gary. And there's five of us, different families, that were affected. Our children were all taken away. I mean, this is horrid that we are all here. We met because we had the same judge. One guy and I were sanctioned. He was 5,000. I was 2,500, same day. Then we get vexatious litigant status. And it's all because we want to see our children. It's it's. Our only, the only protection we have when we walk into court, we know nothing about law. We're not attorneys. We walk into court, the judge is supposed to have an idea that we're, we don't know what's going on. It's like speaking a different language to us. But the judge, in my experience, was the one that was against me. And I have the transcripts to show it. You know, I am walked in as so many did, and all of a sudden my constitutional rights that I, you know, really believed in this country are totally violated. I don't understand it. So we're here. We need each other. We come together because you have to make a difference. And what I'm getting from <coughs> CJP is they're not even open to hearing the possibility that you can improve. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Hazard Sanker. Uh, my children have been, I won't say taken, it's, they've been kidnapped. The family law court works as with fraud, corruption, extortion, and kidnapping. It's, it, it, it's plain, it's simple, it's, I'm an auditor, a former state auditor. And I've seen a lot of fraud and corruption here in this state. But as I've told, and many of my colleagues are well aware, that nothing, all that that I have seen in the fraud and corruption as far as an auditor does not compare, not even close to what is happening in the family law court system, in our justice system. We're talking about children here. There are children, children, high rate 
child sex trafficking, high rate, child abuse, spousal abuse. I, I mean, we're three, four hundred percent that child death rate of any modern developed country. We're killing our kids. There's a reason for that. And it's here. And I beg that you guys do something about it quickly. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair and members, uh, Mike Belode on behalf of the California Judges Association, just briefly. I've listened to these debates about the Commission on Judicial Performance and family courts in California and in this building for 20 years. Uh, please understand, judges take their responsibility in every case, whether civil, criminal, or especially family, very, very seriously. We are talking about the most sensitive cases in our courts. Almost every person that testified today talked about a child custody matter. There is going to be a parent who is granted custody and someone denied custody or some sharing arrangement. They are very, very sensitive cases. But this notion that we have systemic corruption, fraud, illegality, we reject. We think there is a very well-developed process for intake of the complaints, initial evaluation of them, uh, disposing of meritless complaints, formal proceedings when they're necessary, and we think judges in California are operating. And I'm not an apologist. Not every judge is perfect. There are 2,000 judges in California, and some uh, will make mistakes. Some are mistakes of law, and we have courts of appeal to handle those. But you have listened to a litany of complaints, some of which involve the federal courts, some very, very unfocused things that come down to a child custody dispute existed and somebody lost and there is always going to be an unhappy litigant in that circumstance thank you we I'll, I'll conclude we have been working with the Commission to be frank sometimes we think the Commission overreaches but everyone is entitled to due process in this circumstance the complainant but also the judge thank, thank you, you. Um, our last two speakers I'll, I'll, I'll try and make this. Your, thank you for your time. Yeah, well, thank you for your, your time. <clears throat> Madam Chair, you've been extremely patient. Um, I'm not here. My name is Ralph Kanz. I'm from Oakland. I've been involved in court in a civil matter involving real estate fraud. Just to briefly say, the judge who was first assigned the case was taking out a new mortgage with one of the defendants in our case in the month after he was assigned the case and never disclosed it. And the CJP didn't do anything about it. I got one of those letters. The appellate court did nothing about it. Nothing was done about it. The entire system of ju judicial disqualification is malfunctioning in the state. And the CJP is only part of that. The Code of Civil Procedure needs some major revisions to clean up the problems it has that then would actually lessen the load on the CJP if that was done correctly. I would just directly, very briefly read you in a 1995 ruling, the California Supreme Court commented on the purpose of the CJP. Quote, in making our independent determination of the appropriate disciplinary sanction, we consider the purpose of a commission disciplinary proceeding, which is not punishment, but rather the protection of the public, the enforcement of rigorous standards of judicial conduct, and the maintenance of public confidence in the integrity and independence of the judicial system. Our California State Supreme Court said that in 1995. And I don't think there's anybody in this room here today who thinks that the current system is providing what the Supreme Court said we should have. Thank you. Thank you. Our last speaker. Yes. Thank you. Um, let me speak as a grandfather. Um, I'm in a situation right now where my daughter had her child taken away. She was taken into court before she was, before the child was even born. The commissioner didn't even explain to my daughter that she had a right to have a judge heard the case. The commissioner took her naming rights from the child. So my daughter did not get to name her child what she wanted to do. And I'm sitting here listening to all this and tell you live this and find out what's really going on with family court, there has to be an overhaul. And I think if a judge is going to be in the family court, they need to have some type of family background and some type of childhood development. And I listened to this lady here in the blue coat and she says that all the judges are attorneys and that they're not elected. Well, if you read the Constitution, a judge is supposed to be elected by the people. 
and these judges are not being elected by the people they are being appointed so if that's the case and I think if a judge is going to be up for re-election that there should be some type of background that we know before we elect this judge to to the bench and that's not happening these judges go un opposed and do not let anybody know that they're going to be elected until two months prior that comes out on in record so to you ma'am why are we not electing the judges by the people why are you appointing them why is the governor appointing them when we're not given a voice to elect our judges thank you for your time um the debate is with us but thank you um, so first of all to the um, people at the table, thank you for your time in bringing light um, to this issue and um, faces to the issue. I really appreciate that. Yeah. Um, to the commission, I know this was not an easy place to be in today, um, but it was a dis it's a discussion that needed to be had. So um, it's unfortunate that uh, it's a personal issue, but I, I, I hear it's a personal issue for a lot of people. And I think that we as policymakers, and um, as you go back and share your thoughts with the commission, you'll let them know that it's a personal issue for people that are in this room. This is a real issue for them. I appreciate One, yeah, Thank you. So having said that, I want everyone to know that we heard your, your, your plea and your concerns. And I'm going to make a decision um, today that I thought we were going to be voting on, but I'm going to be pulling um, issue item one, commission stati um, staffing, from the agenda, and we will not be voting on that, that today. And, and let me share with you why I'm going to be um, pulling that particular item. It doesn't mean that we're not going to vote on it at some point, but there are real issues that I believe that there's got to be some merit to it. And I hope that by pulling this issue, <clears throat> that it will send a message to the commission that before we approve any more money um, for staffing, and, and I read the, you know, the analysis and very clear saying that they're, they're um, not able to get to a lot of the cases, but currently right now it doesn't appear that they're addressing the current cases. And I'd like to understand from their perspective what they're going to be able to do before we approve additional funding. I'm not asking for a lengthy report, but I would hope that you would go back and be able to share what took place today and come back to this body and help us understand what is going to be different if we move forward with additional funding and staffing. Um, so we're not going to vote on that today. Um, and we'll take it up at another another time. Um, thank you for your time. This there's no action on this item, and no action that will be taking place on the commission staffing um, today. And we'll bring it at another time. Um, if there are any questions or comments from my colleague, um, but uh, I think as chair, I wanted to make that decision, and I hope that this body is okay with that. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.